Coming up on today's show, I'm going to rank my favorite 10 moves the Browns made this offseason. They made a whole bunch more moves, but I'm going to rank my top 10 from 10 to 1. Now, before we look at the first one, I do want to preface it with a bit of a caveat, which is it's hard to find a balance of what's good short term and what's good long term for this team. So I kind of went down the middle 50 50, finding a balance of knowing hey, this is a move for just one season versus this is a move for hopefully years to come. Now, my number 10 spot as we wake our way down the list was signing Marquise Goodwin, the speedy wide receiver from Texas. Last year, he was with the Seattle Seahawks. He comes over, signs a one-year, $1.7 million contract. He doesn't have fantastic stats for a guy who's been in the league for nine years, just 3,000 yards, but he has the ability to take over a game or two from time to time, right? He's got that burst, that elite track star speed. Just go four receptions casually for 126 yards and two touchdowns. Now, he's going to have some phenomenal games where he stretches the field, he takes the top off a of defense, and he's the home run 60-yard catch and throw, but there's also going to be games where there's no Marquis Goodwin sighting. He's not the best route runner. He doesn't have the greatest hands. He's not a red zone target, but he does have that elite speed that defenses have to respect. So when he steps on the field, it opens things up for other wide receivers. Goodwin, as we can see, he's going to win you one to two games. That's kind of my tagline for Marquis Goodwin. We'll win you one to two games. Will disappear for seven or eight games where he gets no receptions or anything like that. But he's still a pretty valuable piece to this offense because, again, when he's on the field, the corners, the safeties, they have to respect his speed because more than just once in his career, he has gone the distance and he has taken over games, and teams do not want to be on the receiving end of that. My number nine move the Browns made this offseason was signing safety Rodney McLeod. When you look back at all the free agent signings, there are some big names in there, but don't sleep on the Rowdy McLeod signing. One year, $1.3 million contract for the 32-year-old safety who was with the Philadelphia Eagles with Jim Schwartz and was a big piece of that success in the city of brotherly love. When you look at Cleveland's safety room, they're going to run a two-safety set a good chunk of the time, but they're also going to have a lot of three-safety looks. And when they want to go for a third safety, Rodney McLeod's going to be that first man off the bench. What I really love about this addition, well, what was the biggest knock with the Browns defense early on last year? Lack of communication, right? Just didn't have that veteran leadership to turn things around when things started to go south. McLeod will definitely get Juan Thornhill and Grant Delpit, two younger guys who have only been in the league for three to four years. They're gonna, he's going to get them on the right track and make sure there are no wide-open, blown coverages at the back end. My eighth favorite move by the Browns this offseason was signing Anthony Walker. So we've got a good run of signings to start here. I'm a fan of the Anthony Walker acquisition because you saw how valuable he was last year once he went down in that Steelers game. The Browns' defense after that, things went from like borderline bad to downright bad, right? The Falcons just blew the Browns' run defense apart the next week. The Chargers abused it the week after that. So Walker comes back on a one-year, $1.2 million contract. This is a linebacker room that's filled with injuries from last year. Hopefully Walker is ready to go by week one. A knock, unfortunately, for Walker has been the lack of availability through two seasons so far with the Browns, he's only played a combined 16 games, which isn't even a full season anymore. So hopefully this year they can get Walker for more than 13 games, 11 games, uh, 13 games. That's what he played his first year with the Browns. Uh, but I think Walker coming back is a very good piece of this defense, a great leader in the middle of it. And he's going to make sure everyone's doing their job and is in the right spot. Now, who do you think the X factor is for the Browns 2023 defense? It's not Miles Garrett. Like you can rely on Miles Garrett, even if he had, even if it's a down year, he's still going to get 12 plus sacks in a bad year. For me, I'm going to go with Denzel Ward. If Cleveland wants to go deep into the playoffs and they want to play football into January, that means slowing down Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen. Now Denzel Ward has had a lot of success slowing down Joe Burrow, but he needs to do that against Mahomes and Allen as well and lock up some of their top wide receivers. 
My seventh favorite move of the offseason was signing Obo Okoronkwo. Now, this was a move that when it broke, hand up, I did not know a whole lot about Okoronkwo. He was not on my radar whatsoever, but he inked a three-year, $19 million contract, and he has gotten better and better as he has been in the NFL. Last year with the Houston Texans, five sacks, 36 pressures, 11 QB hits, nine tackles for loss. I know five sacks does not jump out to you, but that was a dreadful Houston Texans defense. Working opposite Miles Garrett is a great gig for anyone, right? Olivier Vernon's best season came opposite Miles Garrett, right? Jadeveon Clowney had his career saved thanks to Miles Garrett. So Okoronko with the rotation is going to be awesome with Zadarius Smith. Now, I will say when the Browns traded for Zadarius Smith, that obviously kind of bumped down Okoronko on the depth chart. I think they're going to have a healthy rotation on the defensive line. Smith will get kicked in from time to time to get all three pass rushers on the field at once. But if they didn't trade for Zadarius Smith, I'd probably have this closer to 1 than 10 right now. Now, before we get on with the rest of my moves this offseason and ranking them, join our Browns YouTube family here. We are across 20,000 subscribers. We're trying to get to 21,000 before the season gets underway. So if you're looking for a Browns YouTube channel that's completely free and has daily updates, you found the right spot. My sixth favorite move this offseason was signing Juan Thornhill. I promise we're going to get a break in the signings in just a moment. But Juan Thornhill comes over as a nice free agent acquisition. Three years, $21 million. Go back in time to March. What were we all begging for a week or two into free agency? A John Johnson replacement. There were a lot of good safeties out there. Jesse Bates was definitely someone Browns fans were drooling over. But Juan Thornhill for $7 million a season is an extremely good signing. Last season, three picks, nine pass breakups, even got into the backfield. PFF ranked him as the 20th best safety out of 88 qualifying players. Thornhill and his two rings comes over with a lot of experience in the postseason, something that Cleveland Browns roster does not have, and he can impart on his new teammates. Now, I do want to share an awesome deal with everyone before we get to my top five, and that is the Browns polo deal with Fanatics. I'm wearing mine right now. I was such a big fan of it. I had to get my own. So you can get your own on sale, but you have to use our link chatsports.com slash Browns Polo. It's in the comments. It's in the description of today's video. Get your own PD's Polo. It's a great polo to wear to events that might not be super nice because you're still wearing an NFL polo, but you don't want to look like a slump, right? You don't want to look like a guy in a tank top. You can be presentable while also rocking your favorite team. So get your own Cleveland Browns Polo today. My fifth favorite move this offseason is not a signing. It's not a trade actually hiring special teams coordinator Bubba Ventrone. So Bubba comes over to replace Mike Prefer, and he comes to this job with two responsibilities. Very simple stuff. Improve Cade York and find a spark in the return game, right? That was honestly the kiss of death for Prefer last year. He wasn't a bad special teams coordinator, but Bubba Ventrone, a Browns legend, is a big, much bigger improvement. He was awesome in Indianapolis. And he knows he has to get the best out of Cade York because last season, after the first week of the season, things started to go downhill for Mr. York. He went 22 of 30, 73%. That number needs to start with an 8 this year. That is Bubba Ventrone's biggest assignment. And then he's got to find a return man. That was a revolving door last year at kick and punt return. He's got to find a permanent option and someone to just set the table a little bit. The reason why I have it at five is special teams is just not as valuable as it once was with the new with the new return rules really limiting kickoff returns. At number four, I'm going to go with the Elijah Moore trade. Now, this is the part where things get really close and really bunched up, but I think the Elijah Moore trade is number four because the Browns needed speed, right? That was one of the biggest needs going into this offseason was it was obvious in six games with Deshaun Watson last year that Watson was bad, he had to improve, Kevin Stefanski had to improve, but a big reason why both those statements were true was because this wide receiver room was lacking speed. Amari Cooper was hurt with a core muscle injury, DPJ has never been a true burner, if you will, but they moved up to get, or moved back rather, 
to get uh, Elijah Moore from the New York Jets, and I have sky-high expectations for the former Ole Miss Rebel. In his rookie season, in just 11 games, he scored five touchdowns, recorded 538 yards. Then we know that him and the offensive coordinator, LaFleur, did not see eye-to-eye. More or less got put in the doghouse last year, and LaFleur got fired. So I'm going to be inclined to believe that maybe Elijah Moore had some good points in whatever he was trying to get across. The Browns, like I said, they needed speed on offense, and Moore brings that. And another big reason why I'm a fan of this move and why it's number four on my list is the top two wide receivers on this roster, Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones, are question marks when it comes to their future in Cleveland. Cooper with a huge cap hit next year, $23 plus million dollars and DPJ, an unrestricted free agent. So Elijah Moore comes in here with some longer-term security for this team at that position. My number three move is the signing of Dalvin Tomlinson. Now, you can make good arguments to flip-flop number four and number three, but I cannot get the bad taste out of my mouth of last year's pathetic, I mean, sorry-ass run defense. That let the Falcons win a game, let the Chargers win a game. They were the worst run defense, in my opinion, in football last year. Andrew Barry was gambling on being one of the worser teams, but you can't be dead last. And Dalvin Tomlinson comes in to make sure they will no longer be dead last. Priority number one this offseason was get a real defensive tackle, right? Because Jordan Elliott and Taven Bryan, they're nice, but they're not even that nice. Dalvin Tomlinson comes over, and he might not make this group a top 10, but they don't need to be top 10 in run stopping. They just can't be 32. They can be 20. I'm fine with 20. They could be 21. They could be as high as 16 or low as 16, but they just have to get out of the cellar, and Dalvin Tomlinson is a big step in that direction. It was the biggest need, in my opinion, going into this offseason, and it was a nice, solid check mark in that box. Now, should the Browns sign another defensive tackle? This is what I want to hear from everyone watching right now. Do you think they've done enough, or do you think they should be making some more moves on the defensive line? I want to hear what all of our viewers have to say. The number two move was the Zadarius Smith trade, something that no one really saw coming. There was some buzz that the Browns might be looking to add a veteran free agent uh, edge rusher after the draft. But no one saw them going out and getting a guy like Zadarius Smith for pennies on the dollar. Like before we started filming, producer Jack Lauderre, he's not a Browns guy. He's like, that's all it costs to get him? I'm like, yeah, that's all it costs to get him. A couple day three pick swaps to land a player who over the last four seasons, you can see he has put up double digit sack numbers three out of the last four years. Now, last season, he emerged on the scene in Minnesota with nine and a half sacks in the first half of the season. Unfortunately, a knee injury slowed him down, but he is back to 100% health. And if you have casually 12 and a half sacks as the number two player on your defense, yeah, that's going to do great things for Miles Garrett, right? When TJ Watt won Defensive Player of the Year with 22 and a half sacks or whatever, he didn't do it by himself. He had a great partner in crime, Highsmith, Hayward. So if you add Darius Smith to this equation with Jim Schwartz, I think this is a 20-sack season potentially for Miles Garrett. I think that is a realistic goal for him with Miles Garrett having Darius Smith on the other side of the defensive line for him and Jim Schwartz as his defensive coordinator. We could be seeing the best season yet out of Superman. My favorite move, number one, was the hiring of defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz. Schwartz. You might have thought it would have been a signing or a trade, but no. It is the defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, coming up to Cleveland, going back to where he started his career. Schwartz is going to maximize this defense. I mean, we talked about wanting to get a new run-stopping defensive tackle this offseason, but the biggest cry from the dog pound last year was get Joe Woods out of town. And the Browns didn't just get him out of town. They didn't just replace Joe Woods. They got someone who is so far ahead of Joe Woods. This defense and the talent on it is hopefully, knock on wood, finally going to live up to the expectations, right? There is pro bowl and all pro talent all over this defense. Denzel Ward, Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson. You can make a good argument. That's one of the top five cornerback rooms in the NFL. 
Didn't look like it last year, though. On paper, it's all there. Jim Schwartz is going to turn it from paper to between the lines, and I can't wait to see it. That's why that was my number one move this offseason. This Browns defense will hopefully live up to the billing now that they've got one of the best defensive minds in football and Jim Schwartz on the sidelines calling the plays. So what was your favorite move the Browns made this offseason? Jim Schwartz is a sleeper one. It's my number one. If I had to undo any of those moves, that would be the last one I would want to undo, followed by Darius Smith and Elijah Moore. But let me know what your favorite offseason move was. Now, to wrap up the show, Jack Lauderé is very confident. He's talking big game out in the bullpen here at Chat Sports. Man. I don't know. What, what card are you going with? Oh, give me, I don't know, man. I don't feel confident anymore. I felt confident beforehand, but then you get under the lights and it's a Dude, little scary. Dude, the lights are way brighter than you guys um, think. Give me, oh, give me, give me three hearts. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go one more cup. Give me seven of diamonds. Nine of spades. Nine of spades. That is it for today's show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's show. If you did, subscribe, like the video, notifications, you know all that stuff. Leave a comment, and we'll see you guys later on.